Good afternoon. Hope all's well. Um, so we've got another uh, live session this afternoon with Patrick Killian from Killian Art, uh, who's designed some amazing artwork that I've seen from his profile. And I'm glad that he's joining us today on our live. So I'm going to take him in just now. Matata, you've not I'm moved from that. You've not moved from that chair all night. I take it. I have. I've, I've, <laughs> I actually had a neat one. I um, I was uh. I think I was working until about three in the morning. Well, two in the morning, probably. Wow. But but I didn't start till late. I mean, that's the thing, and you, know, you get little uh, little inspiration journey. Absolutely. You know? and before we on. before we start, can I ask what are you painting? Well, it's actually uh a young lad, you wouldn't know him. He's actually, um, he travels around the world. His father's commissioned me to do this piece. Um, he's a cabaret, he's a, he's a professional cabaret singer, travels around the world. Um, I don't know if I can actually, if you can see it very yep. well, but this it's, is... back, it's backwards, obviously. Wow. So, but it's a wow, nice wow. piece, you know, right? so I'm working on this piece. I might, I might, I might have to, I might have to come up to you and 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 ask you to do one for me hey, soon. No problem. No problem. Um, so Patrick, we're here today to discuss uh, uh, about your artwork and what you do and how this has inspired you to become an artist. Um, you know. Yeah. So before we start, if you can just let me know a few words about yourself, who you are, and what you do, and then we can yeah. get the conversation going. Well, my. My name is Patrick Killian. I'm actually, uh, I live in the valleys of South Wales. Wow. Uh, in, a, in an area called Newbridge. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm about 25. I, I got the best of both worlds, to be honest, uh, Mataza. So I, you've got the highlands and the lowlands? Well, I, I'm about 25 minutes away from the capital, from Cardiff. And um, I'm literally a 25-minute drive from Cardiff. But I, and then I, I'm living in like the valleys of Wales with the mountains. I actually overlook a mountain from my home. Wow. So to have that, um, I quite like it, you know? And I, and I, I often it, thought of, it. I thought of moving to London, or to move into Cardiff. And I thought to myself, well, hang on, you know, it takes me- I bet, I bet you would three, not get that inspiration out here. Well, it takes me three hours to get to London. It you know, it's not a, it's not a problem, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, uh, so my my background when I was younger, I um, I've always been into art ever since a young kid, and then I got into boxing age sixteen, um, wow. and then and then it sort of opened the door, you know. I really well, I always loved boxing, but I didn't start training and stuff and and competing until I was eighteen. Yeah. Um, but then that led well, it, you know, the passion of the art with the boxing i sort of linked the both together and okay. followed my passions you know and um and i think it's led me now to where i am today especially with the, the paint and the fighters and uh and the other i, I don't just paint boxing i obviously i'm doing this now so yeah i, paint, I, I mean I've, some, of... I've, I've seen the artwork that you did for captain tom moore did you oh, did you yeah, get yeah. to send it to his family yes it was out it went yesterday so That's... um it should be, I, I would have thought they'd get it by Monday. Okay. So it'll be lovely to see if there's, if I get a reaction and um, it'd be lovely to hear what, uh, what they say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It'll be a good one. Um, so Patrick, um, you mentioned that you were, you were pretty much into boxing when you started at a young age. I mean, did you always have that in mind that you're, 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 I mean, were you good at art that you that you decided that okay it's 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 good to be an artist or I, did it I, just come after you finished boxing then you were like okay no i i always had a talent from a very young age and i mean i had i had school reports when the school reports were average average or um you know you'd have, you'd have english average maths average art excellent and then it would always <laughs> say Patrick has a very mature style of drawing. I was in junior school. Wow. So it, it could be seen. So you're talking year two, year three kind of thing. 
well, you know, at the age of like, I was, I asked my mum, funny enough, a couple of a couple of months back, because I was, she said, oh, you you were asking for like pen and pencil at four, because uh, I wanted to, I just wanted to draw and stuff. Draw. Um, I mean, did you see that from somewhere? Did you did you get an inspiration from someone that you saw drawing or I didn't you saw a lot? Of, didn't just I just wanted just, to draw. It, it was very very natural. And, and obviously, was, back in those days, we didn't even have YouTube or anything. Where no. now these days, like today, you're on Instagram Live and you're doing the painting. We didn't have this kind of stuff back no. then. So I mean, it's very hard for people like our generation or the older generation to have found that inspiration on their own. You know, I mean. My That's kids these days. You know, I, I didn't. I didn't really think of it in that way, but um, it was just the nut. You know, I wanted paper. I just wanted to draw, and I would draw anything and everything. Anything you that you saw. Yeah, you know. but you know whether it was a because we didn't have YouTube, but we had papers. We had Absolutely. magazines. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'd be probably flicking through and drawing whatever, or, or you know, birthday cards. I always remember copying birthday cards and things like that. So you know, it, it, you know, we didn't have Google and stuff, but we would. When you think about it, we just did what we had to do. Absolutely. Did you ever draw your mother or your parents? Yeah, probably. I, you know, I probably just tried to doodle them now and again. I, you know, I can't remember, but I was. I always, just always remember because my mum worked. Um, she worked for herself as a as a um, provident agent. A yeah. Lot, you know, early on, I remember she used to travel. She used to go out and go to the office. And I, when she, I remember going to that office and just asking for a pen and a piece of paper. And I would just sit there and draw. Um, and, that, and that happened, you know, throughout, until, until I left school. And, and that was really all I was interested in. Was, or, I was lucky, to be honest, Mataza. A lot of my friends, I had a good group of people around me. A lot were going to college. A lot, a lot were, you know... So I got a solicitor. My best mate's a solicitor. Others are teachers. Others are so. So they've got a professional career. Yeah, and I thought, well, what should I do? And the only thing I was good at was art. So I ended up going to art college. If it wasn't for my friends going to college, maybe I wouldn't have gone. You know, you wouldn't have gone. But um, I, I, I wouldn't. Where was that? Was that in Wales or was that? In yeah, London, just or? a local cross okay. uh, just an art and design course. Then I went and done an illustration course. Okay. But the funny thing was, during that illustration course, uh, that's when I was boxing for my country. I was Patrick, do you mind just t tilting the camera slightly towards your face? Perfect. Is that better? That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Super. Yeah, so, um, and, and, and then after I, even when I was in college, it was strange, you know, because obviously I'm in my, in my, um, my room, my digs, doing my paintings, and yep, I feel yep. like listening to... I listen to like listening to calm music, to be honest. With you. Love songs and stuff. I, I mean, like, I mean, a lot of artists artists listen to that kind of music, right? The calm, composing kind of. The funny thing is, no, I don't so much know. Do you know why? Because I listen to podcasts when I'm working. <laughs> but generally, if I do listen to something, it would be like love music and stuff. I just, I just like that soft, you know. Maybe, maybe now, maybe now you can listen to our podcast after you. But the funny thing finished. is, right, Mataz, <laughs> the funny thing is, my mate would come and say he thought it was funny because I'd be a, I'd be a, I was a student in, my, in a studio working on my stuff to like listening to, you know, lovey dovey songs because it just relaxed me. Yeah. On the weekend, I'd be boxing for my country. What a weird. For uh, the country. Yeah, for Wales. I'd be boxing for Wales. I, only amateur, but, but it, was, it was a very strange combination, you know? So did you get to the Olympics? No, 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 I didn't. I would have loved to, but I, no, I, I won that good enough. I Did won. you ever have that in the back of your mind that you want to go well, to I would have loved to, you know. I always remember watching uh, different guys. At the and if you and were in the Olympics, which Olympics would, have, would you have competed for? Sorry? If you, if you were going to pursue to be in the Olympics, which Olympics well, would you have competed enough, for? If I was good enough, I would have been for Great Britain. But, okay, 2012. Uh, oh, no, I, I'm talking way back now. Man, I'm 45 now, Mataza. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, uh, I was boxing 20, 25 years ago. I was, you know, a, a, you know, really a, a 20 year old, uh, training hard, you know? Okay, good. Um, so once you, once you finished art college, I mean, then did you pursue boxing as the sort of career I did, that you, I did pursue boxing. 
Okay. Uh, I was very see. It's it's funny. Um, I very nearly pursued it. I don't know if you've heard of Joe Calzaghe. Yep, uh, yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Well, he was uh, his his dad ran a club here, Newbridge Boxing Club, very close to my home. Yep. And I was very. He's I mean, from Wales as well, isn't he, John yeah, Calgary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very tempted in 1997 yep. to turn pro with his dad, but it didn't happen. I had bad, my hands were hurting, and I just thought it was, I didn't want to ruin my art career by turning pro. But see, I, I, I was going to do it for two reasons. Is I it, is felt, it, uh, sorry, is it, is it true that if you are a real boxer, your nose cannot be straight? Well, if you look at mine, mine, mine is really, um, mine's uh, crooked. You can't see it with, 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 like, but, You know, if you get hit on a nose, what, you know, what do you expect? You know, it's going to get hit above. They, but, they uh, say that you're not a true boxer until you break your nose. Yeah, I, I think I broke it. I think I broke it a few times. But that shows you're not good enough. You can't move out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then, once you finished... Uh, uh, once you uh, went off from boxing and you thought that you want to get into painting. Uh, um, well, I was always it... painting during that time. It, okay. it was always, a, it was always a, a, an end goal of, see, the reason why I was going to turn pro, because I just wanted to say this, I, I was looking at it as a business sense. I was looking at this. If I turn pro with Newbridge Boxing Club with Enzo Calzaghi, you know, they had a lot of uh, media going there at that time. And what a story it would have been if, you know, this artist, this boxer turns pro, but he's also an artist as well, and he can produce yeah. these yeah. things. So that was, in a, that was in the back of my mind. It was like a business thing of turning pro because and, 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 and match room, to do it. Matchroom didn't exist at that point. No, no, no. no. Well, they, they did because it was, it was matchroom, but it wasn't the boxing. Yeah. Uh, well, they, well, they did because obviously uh, his father ran it then because they, okay. they had, you know, he just wasn't as big as it is now. All right. Um, but, um, and, and I, to be honest, I just felt now, you know, I'm just going to, because my hands were hurting a lot. And I just thought I'll stick to the painting. I'll just okay. stick to it. Was there, was, there, was, there, was there a reason that your hands were hurting? I mean, is that with every boxer that they get it? I wouldn't that... have thought so. It's just I was whacking the bag so hard and, and, and training hard and, and, uh, and hitting the pads. And then when you do that a lot, you, you obviously it's going to take its toll. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't regret it. I, I think, uh, you know, I'm doing what I love. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's what it's about, right? That yeah. you Which pursue is, something is that is your hobby and your passion, not something that you are... Okay, it's a nine to five. You're getting paid for it, and that's it. You know that is why people's morale, the self esteem, the passion dies out because they start thinking that okay, I'm earning certain amount of money, but I'm not doing something that I like. You know. Well, uh, I think I don't know if you've ever. You must have listened to. Um, I'm trying to think of his name again. This always happens to me. He's a philosopher, and uh, it was a brilliant. Um, it's a brilliant three, three and a half minute um, yes. section where he talks about school and he talks, he asks, he says to the children, what, what, if money, what, what would you like to do if money was no object? Yeah. And he says that they all say, be an artist, be a, be a, a horse whisperer, or do, do something. And he, and he says to the group, he says, you do that and forget about the money. Alan Watts, he says, you do that and forget about the money. I might check it out. Because when you, if you, if you, if you do things just for the money, yeah, we just, we, we just continually do things that we don't really enjoy. And do you know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. Says, I'm, just write, I'm just writing his name down so I don't forget it. Yeah, you stick it, you, and it's called, uh, what do you desire? What do you desire? Alan Watts, what do you desire? What do you desire? I might, I, might, I, I might see it and put a clip of it on... on uh, well, it's supposed uh, to be an half minutes long. It's a really, really... Uh, it's a really... Uh, in, it's, when you listen to it, you think, wow. You know, it's, it's a super. really good point. I'm going to check it out. Um, so, obviously, then you mentioned that your hands were starting to hurt and everything. And then uh, at the age of, 
what did you decide that okay now it's time to hang the gloves and pursue well i, I didn't i didn't necessarily hang them up i just thought you know what i'm just going to I'll, i'll just concentrate on the painting more okay you no know? but it was it was always in the back of my mind you know to and that's the thing in it with fighters you know you've got a lot of fighters now making a comeback you know Texas absolutely so. um quick question before you started box before you started boxing what was the yeah. best painting you made or best artwork that you did well it's hard to say you know good is in the eye of the beholder so uh, <laughs> it's a very uh, for me to, i i wouldn't i wouldn't i'm not sure because i done a lot of nice pieces you know back in university and in college and um i don't know i i don't know i wouldn't like the i don't you wouldn't like to like okay um So then coming back to your artwork now. Yeah. How do you find inspiration on a daily basis to continue doing art? What is it that keeps you going? I think um I think it's just in me to in some respect but also um I actually like the fact, you know, when I look when you look back at the likes of Van Gogh, by all accounts he sold two paintings in his life. Yeah. And then you look at you look at him now, you look at what's happened for him now uh as he's gone. Um and you know, imagine if imagine if YouTube and imagine if we could go on to YouTube now and watch Van Gogh when, in a time lapse video. In Absolutely. a time lapse video doing a piece. and that's something that so legacy i would think and it's nice thought people have i've had a few people say to me you know partly said you're going to be well you're going to be remembered when you're long gone and i think it's a nice thought that i, I don't mean that in a big headed way i just think it's a nice thought that i will leave something behind absolutely absolutely and, uh, like this painting you're doing right now you're you're going to send it to that person Yeah. that person's going to have their kids they're going to have exactly. their kids you know, this painting will always stay there you know provided yeah. it stays there maybe you know god knows 50 years 100 years down the line they might want to auction it for a few million you never know so it's <laughs> it, who knows what's going to happen you know in the future you just don't know do you? so it's absolutely uh, and I, so i think that that's something that and and, and actually mataza is is listening to a lot of things as well they really do inspire me as well to to push and you know it's um but i think i got it in myself anyway I who's think, your biggest inspiration in the art world um i wouldn't say is anybody in particular i'm inspired all the time by different people even even artists today so you know there's no um there's no just one artist uh uh oh, thank you ella there's no one person that um that I look at and think yeah they they inspire me you know I've been inspired yeah. I've been it's a funny thing was when I was in university because funny enough I started doing a wildlife illustration course oh, wow but in fairness to the did you did the, you ever did you ever travel to the safari to illustrate that well I I I have but not um recently but the interesting thing what well, they they could see that because I was boxing as well at my at the yeah. time they yeah. could see that I was um you know i had this other interest so well, part of even though it was a wildlife illustration course i was coming up with sport boxing paintings and they were okay with that you know they let me they let me go down my own route have you have you have you drawn uh, muhammad ali oh yeah plenty of times yeah and three joshua he's one of the um inspirations you know you, you there's so many different uh, you can do so many different paintings of ali and they're all going to be different absolutely And yeah, I done Andy Joshua a few times. Um actually I was out in I was out in um Saudi Arabia like with uh, Oh, did you say so you got a perfect shot of that? Oh, it, it was brilliant. I took my I I was exhibiting my painting over there in okay. um, Saudi Arabia. So that was great. They both signed the piece, Andy Rui and Anthony Joshua. Wow. So, amazing. you know, it was amazing that he regained the title. out there as and, well and 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 uh, can i ask you this question did you sell that on or have you got it well the plan was we there was a gala dinner prior to the fight 
Okay. Um, and so there was going to be a lot of princes there and everything, all the right people. And it was a perfect opportunity for me. Unfortunately, they wanted 100% to go to the charity. So um, I declined. I declined on, on it going. So um, I, I brought it back with me. Uh, I got it in my gallery. Why did they want you to go to the charity? They wanted 100% to go to the charity. So I thought, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I mean, why would you wait? Why, why would you? Why well, would they ask you to do that? Exactly. Why would they ask you to do it? Uh, well, see the problem. And is normally, that... these th- these kind of things comes from the artist himself. Like, I will donate my profit to the charity, not yeah. the buyer saying that. Oh, you got to donate it to the charity. Yeah. I mean, the problem was I, there was two people. There was two people I was discussing it with. The one guy wanted me to get it sorted and get it in there, and he said we'll sort the percentages out after. I then wanted to clear that up and have a have a meeting with one guy in the morning and, and discuss discuss everything and make sure that you know, but when he said that then I you know, that was it. It's what it happens, you know. And you but still got it? Matazza, yeah, I have. But the Matazza, What's the this, price? I, I always I always say this and because this is so true in my career and everybody's career. Yeah. Every adversity, every failure brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage or benefit, Napoleon Hill. And when you, when you, when I look at some, when something like that happens and something doesn't sell, is a reason for it. Absolutely, hundred percent. They'll, it'll come. Hundred percent, because it always has. You know what? What as a, as a Muslim, what we are always taught to believe is that it's not that it didn't happen because something was wrong. It didn't happen because God wanted to give you better. I I think that sometimes it's funny because, but but me having knowing that saying and and, and that quote from Napoleon Hill does help me actually because Absolutely. when shit happens, I think of that quote, and I think now nah, you know what some is better going to come. Something something better, better is going to come out of it. Absolutely. I could tell you a few stories about that as well. You know, it's quite funny. You know, I I can. Like an example would be, I've gone to London, all the way to London for an event with certain different people. Yeah. The painting was meant to be auctioned. Yeah. Um, the, the, the security at the event, and I actually, it was Wassi Makram. It was the cricket player, right? I did okay. a, a painting of Wassi Makram, and it was, it was supposed to be signed by Wassi at the end of the night. The, the the security there was terrible, so everybody was going around Wasi. Yeah, and, and yeah. He got a bit yeah. Peed off. So he left. After this was this was before he retired or after he retired? Uh, probably after after okay. he retired. Okay. It, well, it wasn't that long ago. So I was supposed to have it signed. He left. So the 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 main promoter guy was um you know everybody was up in you know and. And, and I thought to myself, and I thought of that saying. I thought, well, you know, something better. Will Maybe come. something better will come out. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I said to, um, I, I was just in a general conversation. I said, oh, it is what it is. I said, don't, don't worry about it. No, no problem. Two days later, I get a phone call. Pat, um, have you still got that painting? I said, yeah. He said, well, I'm going to meet this guy. I can't remember his name. He said, I'm going to meet this guy. Uh, I'm going to, I'll take your painting. And, you know, you just know if somebody's legit. I met, the guy, I met the guy on the night and he said to me, he said, I might be able to help you. So he, anyway, he phones me up two days later and he said, Pat, you still got a painting? I think I can meet up with Wassim and get it signed to you. I said, great, okay, brilliant. So I met him and the funny thing was he was having a meeting with somebody in Cardiff, this guy. So I met him in Cardiff, give him the painting. We had a good discussion because he was with somebody else yep. over coffee. <clears throat> he took the painting, phoned me up a few days later. He said, Pat, will you take Will you take 2000 for the painting, blah, 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 or something? And in the end, anyway, we ended up selling it for a little bit more. And I thought to myself after that if that piece was auctioned on the night, I would have had to give part of it to the promoter, right? Well, I ended up getting more because they didn't auction it on that night. And, and, and keeping it all. And or did you... it all. Well, I give a little bit to the guy that did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but the beauty was, you know, it just, it just goes to show that you know, it's not because I could have. You know, a lot of people would have had a, a go at the promoter. Absolutely, but there was no point. You know, my dad yeah. always said, "Never burn your bridges." There's no point in 
having a, a go at people and because it's not their fault. It's you know, it's, it's yeah, it's, it just happens. Yeah. Um, quick question about that painting of Anthony Joshua and Ruiz. Yeah. You mentioned you still got it. What's the price on that? Well, it's on it's on the website, and usually I don't put a price on a website, but I just wanted to give an in, an in, in, inclination of it's only yeah. fifty grand, because what you have to realize, and what people, I think what people don't realize is that at the end of the day, if you want it, that paint has been all the way to Saudi Arabia, it's been signed by the two former heavyweight champion of the world, the current heavyweight champion of the world. He regained the heavyweight. There's a lot of history to that painting. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, and uh, if I told the whole story, you'd get it back. <laughs> um, I might well, have to do. I might have day, to do another live session for that. I guess. <laughs> at the end of the day, you can't go anywhere and buy that painting. You can't walk yeah. into Harrods and buy that painting. It's your personal you know, work. It's, it's me. You got to yeah. come to. You either got to go to my agent or come to me and buy it. So. You know, I think that, don't get me wrong, if I was made a good offer, I'd probably let it go. go but um, it, doesn't, it doesn't, I got at a stage in my career where it doesn't really bother me if something sells or not. You know, especially when I do an artwork for my, when it's for my, if it's a commission or something else. If I'm doing it for me to, to pr uh, promote it and show it off at a, at a big fight, then it's for me. And, it, and if it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. Um, but you know it, it is what it is. I would it's... like to I would like to ask you this question right now that we're live. I've always had this thing about you know I saw um, Christie's, yeah, and how they do their auctions and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm not saying that I want to do an auction, but I want to ask you this question that I want to sell painting. Yeah, I I sell properties in London and the UK, but this yeah. has always been at the back of my mind. You know, sell artwork. Yeah. Right. Would you ever consider me as your agent? Of course I would. You know, and I mean, uh, I've got another agent in London. It's a guy called Mr. Bookats. He's been uh, amazing. And funny enough, funny enough, Mataza, he's a property investor as well. Um, he done very well in the property markets when everything, when everything dropped. In 2008. Yeah, he, it was either 2008 or before. But he was very lucky. Before would have been it, booming. It would have been either yeah, 2008 or just after. Him and his brother, they were getting all these properties that um, council properties, I, I take it, he was buying them really cheap and, yeah. out, and all of a sudden yeah. the property boom. He sold everything. Yeah. And he made a lot of money. He made a lot of money. And um, he has been such a gentleman to me. Um acting as an agent because cause he's cause he's such a a well off guy and, and a successful guy. He's on a lot of um charity. He's like in a, a, he's like on the board for a lot of charities. And he would put my name forward a lot of times and say about me doing a painting paint at, at an event. Um so I, I painted on a number of occasions at the Dorchester uh for big charity events because of him. So, um, but hey, you know we love we love a chat about it. That's that's a good absolutely. Uh, you know, I've I've always wanted to sell art. Um, it's just one of those things that I really love. You know, I love well, people creativity you because involved. it's all about it's all about when you're doing a painting. Okay, you're 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 painting someone right now, or you painted a boxer, or you painted a celebrity, or you've painted anyone. But it's your emotion that you are showing with that painting. And I really love that because people, it, it's, it inspires me of what you're going through that, at that point of doing that painting. Yeah. You know? That's an interesting thing as well because sometimes, you know, I can approach a painting so differently in how, I, how I'm feeling. Or I had a chat with yesterday with Ellen McChrystal. I don't know if she's still on you. But we uh, we were chatting about, you know, saying about um, when people ask me how long did something take you, or and I mentioned about, you know, if I said it took me a day, but if I told you it took me, it's taken me a lifetime to get to where I am now, it it puts a completely different perspective on that piece because, 
you know, perception. And perception's everything with people. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I, I was just reading this the other day that, you know, I, I don't get paid for the five minutes of work that I prepare to sign a document. I get paid for the 30 years of experience <laughs> that exactly. makes me sign that document in five minutes. The reason why I said that just now is because if I go back 10 years, I would have approached this painting t completely differently to how I am now. Yeah. Now, yeah, so I find that quite very interesting, actually, you know, you know, um, different stages in an artist's career as well, you know, it might be going through a blue stage, I might be going through a, a you know what I mean? And do you, have a, do you have a painting of a boxer right now lying somewhere that you can show me? Well, there's Bernard Hopkins at the back there, but obviously it's, it's back to front. Let me, yeah. uh, let me flip this around a minute because um, let me flip this around. Let me show you. Uh, matter of fact, I tell you what we'll do. Why don't you flip it around and show us all your paintings? That's what I'm going to do. We're going to uh, just take a walk through. I'm just going to take you downstairs a minute as well because um, I think that'll be a nice uh, just to show that piece. Well, anyway, let me show what I'm working on. Wow. Just give you an indication of. Wow. This no, I, I, I haven't really showed this to anybody because it's actually supposed to be a, a private. I don't want him to see it either. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's for his father, but he, it was a house moving party. Wow. But this piece Amazing. here is signed by Bernard Hopkins. Wow. Bernard Hopkins owns the original. Uh, it was presented to him at the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame. Okay. This is uh, Gorman's, the three pats. This is off the Utah. Yeah. It's the three pats here. It's not quite finished yet, but. Um, that's an old one here, Tyson. He's actually signed it in the corner, but it was an awful signature. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna paint over this. I'm gonna take all the colour. Who, who has he knocked over there? Oh, it was Trevor Burbick. This is a beautiful <laughs> one. I, I'm, I'm still in the oh, process. Oh, this is of doing an amazing it. one. I'm still in the process of doing this. Uh, Top Gun commission. I feel the need, the need for speed. But I just, I'm just going over that with a, with an oil uh, base. Wow. Um, this is a beauty one here of... Uh, wow. This of is Ali. beautiful. So the, my, um, my studio's a nice size, you know. It's a nice yeah. working area space for myself. Yeah. And um, so if I come down here... Piece going out. That's off the Luxembourg. So um, we've got... Put the light on. Wow. That piece there is signed by Canelo. Yep, um, yep. Yeah, he says sign. That, that's not original. That's a canvas edition. Signed okay, by, that's signed by uh, Taylor, Josh Taylor. And, yeah, uh, and then we got um, the big beauty one there. Oh, this is signed the one. by Joshua. Signed wow. by Andy Rui. Wow, the two heavyweight. Regained the wow. heavyweight championship of the world. Wow, wow, wow! This is amazing. Yeah, it's a nice, um, nice piece. Shut this door up, yeah. And then I'll show you another two now that we got there. There's um, signed by Linares, signed by uh, Ricky Hatton. Wow. I mean, these are just the boxing stuff. You've even got a bloody yes. belt, belt on a wall. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> what about what about uh, what about uh, Thingy? What's his name? What's that? Uh, the, the guy who beat... Um, Bit of a mess. Wilder. What's his name? The British guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deontay Wilder? Or oh, Tyson yeah. Fury? Yes, Tyson oh, Fury. Few, few, I've done a few Fury. I've done okay. some nice ones. i got to get this canvas edition sorted of here. This is a, um, This wow. is going out. This, this sold in Vegas. This is um, a canvas edition of the second fight. But I just wanted to capture the mocking of Wilder and then the knockdown of... of uh, but I've got a new piece that I'm working on. You've got to do the knockdown of Wilder now. <clears throat> well, I, I'm doing a beautiful piece. I don't know if you've seen it yet. It's on my Instagram, but um, okay. it's not quite finished yet. But it's, um, it's a really nice piece. of the. It's called The Victory. Wow. But it's being, it's being, yeah. I can't, I can't. Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't believe. You know, when I when I started doing these live sessions, I never knew that I'm going to 
be, you know, yesterday I was with an architect and he showed me around his designs, his buildings that he's done, you know, all the way from Austria. And today with these paintings, you know, the other day I had a musician who sang over well, listen, here. Listen, there was a guy on you just now. I don't know if he's still there, Manny, Manny, uh, there's Manny Boss. If you, if Manny Boss, Manny, if you're still here, it'd be really worth you having a chat with Manny. He's a very successful guy uh, in Leeds. Okay. Um, it'd be really worth you having a chat with him. Absolutely. He's, he's, I bought, he's, bought, he's bought quite a few of my pieces. Super. That'd be great. I'll, I'll definitely have a, have a chat with him. Um, so, quick question. I mean, I know you're... I, I don't want to ask you this question that how you're adopting to this world right now because there's nothing to adopt for you because you, you've always been on your own. You've always drawn on your own, the artwork well, and everything. That's a funny thing, yeah. You know, I, I've been lucky in that sense in that, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm actually... You, I, I, I mean, I'll ask you this question. Do you care about the lockdown? Do I care about it? <laughs> Does it matter to you? It doesn't... Well, it, not really because... I'm doing the same thing that I would have. The only thing that I'm missing, I'm going, I'm going out to the framers. The framers is open. My print is open because there's only two guys there. Um, I miss going out for a coffee. Or the, or for lunch. Or the pub. No, I don't, I don't drink. Seriously? Wow. Great. Well, I, I do dress wrong, right? I do drink, but I don't, I don't, I never drink in a house. Okay. Um, I've, I don't enjoy it, if I'm honest. The only, okay. the, only, the only time that I enjoy drinking is if I'm going to get drunk. <laughs> and that never happens. <laughs> well, it does, but not very often at all. I mean, uh, if I'm in Vegas or something and we're having a drink, I might have a few and get a yeah. bit tipsy, but I never, in a, I never get really... Um, I never get really too, too bad. Like too, too bad. Um, how, long, how long have you been into the properties? How long have you been... 12 years now. Wow. Awesome. I mean, uh, the whole reason for me... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the whole reason for me to do property is because um, my wife is an architect. Wow. And when I was at university, we got together and everything, and then we got, we got engaged. And then I decided that I'm doing business, and she's doing architecture, I want to start a family business, not just for me, but for my kids. Right, you know, right. For, for okay. them, because when I, I mean, my father never had a family business that I could go back to. Right. And that whole thing was playing on my mind. Right. You know, you, you always, you can, you can never be better than your father, but you can do certain things that your father could not achieve. And you can to, to live that legacy, you know, Definitely. and, 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 I mean, I, I, I will say it till the day I die that I can never be like how my father was and is, you know, it's, it's never going to be the case. But yet I can fulfill certain dreams that he would want to have to done, you know, all that kind of stuff. So my aim was to start a family business and for my kids not to think ever that, you know, they don't have a place to come back to if the world were to reject them. You know, yeah. like obviously yeah. interviews, this, that, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, discrimination, everything. You know, they will always have a place in the business that they can fall back on. Yeah. And that's what inspired me to get into uh, to get into business and not just business, but something that inspired me to start a family business where I do the property deals and my wife does the design work, the architecture work, you know, so it's still in planning because she's yeah. a full time mother. Um, but obviously next year, my little one will start going to school and that's when she'll have free time to do a lot of these things that we can work towards and build up that. So the, the whole thing of me doing this is to become a property developer on a yeah. massive scale. Brilliant. Um, so that's why I, I, I decided to, to get into property. Fantastic. No, I, uh... but, but now that I've spoken to you, I'm inspired by your art. And I no, want to see, me, like, and, and that is why and that is why I want to you know it's uh, when I was never good at art never like every time we had artwork I think I think you either get you either have a natural talent for it or 
because you know you you can go to university listen you know and i i don't i don't really rate university especially as an art for art. what it does do it gives you time to you know create your outlet and and what you're going to what your style is going to be yeah yeah how you're going to you know which way you're going do you know what i mean because yep. they 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 teach you to elaborate and adapt so you know they don't they didn't teach me how to paint or draw i could do that you know that's not what college is about you know we It's are about enhancing and, yourself and and yeah yeah and yeah. and i, and I, and I you know there's a lot of really good artists out there that never went to college or anything you yeah, know and they're, absolutely. They're very successful I mean when I was at school and my my teacher used to say to you know draw and just a normal thing like draw a man or something like that you know the 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 really easy stuff circle face a line yeah. two yeah. lines for the hand two lines for the legs that was me yeah. that was how I used to do <laughs> really yeah. listen you know there, there's definitely people out there that you know it doesn't have to be because people are saying to me oh you wish I could draw but everybody can everybody can paint everybody can paint marks and shapes and different things you know and be more abstract i mean so can i just say know. this that the painting that that you know that confuses me or 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 makes me think how is this guy an artist you know when you go to a gallery and there's a painting there um with scattered paint around you know someone just flicked the brush all over the place you know all over yeah. the canvas and yeah i i remember this that when i went to the gallery for the first time with my wife and my wife was like wow i was like woman what's wow about that someone just flicked yeah. the brush all over and she's like murtaza that's, that's, that's called that's called that's called art you know that is called art yeah <laughs> but, it certainly uh, is um beauties in your eyes beholder you know and I, and i and i think a lot of a lot of stuff i don't appreciate it you know what i mean and i yeah. and i think it's the media the media will create um the media can create a sale for a lot of people yep you know I mean? absolutely i think absolutely. so you know the um, the attention of that indeed so patrick before we uh, wrap up one quick question um for what would you advise the young uh, the young artists or the young generation or college going university going art students of how to do it and how to get inspired by being good at what you do what would you advise them um to practice all the time but well, one of the one of the things i would say is to network network as much as possible because a lot of the times i think that's that's where things lead you know when people network with other with other things so you know that's one of the reasons why i paint live at different places because you just you know it gives me an opportunity then because if i'm in my studio doing what i'm doing now nobody can come up to me and talk to me yep but what i find is when i when i do paint live there there's that's where opportunities come and it could be a very small opportunity but it opens doors you know and it does create something at the end so i think networking is a huge thing in any business and you're Absolutely. doing brilliant with you know with with the networking especially with all the interviews and stuff i mean you listen you said to me earlier about the art thing you couldn't send me a message now and we've already had a had a a, a good discussion absolutely you, you know what i mean and and it does lead to to things absolutely this is this is the whole reason for me to do these live sessions is not just to not just to um ask people questions about everything but it's also to spread that knowledge and spread that positivity by doing this like there could be a lot of artists out here who may listen to this now who may listen to this in 24 hours who may listen to this whenever they will see this piece and they might get inspired by the work that you've done by the talk that we've had and that's what it's about right creating yeah. that community because people are at this point in time getting lost with all the stuff that's going around well i you probably know? should have done a lot more um i've done a few live videos with people but i probably should have done a lot more i've gone live myself a few times but i go live at stupid o'clock 
<laughs> you know, either way, you know, I said, I'm at my school at night, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it's, I said, you know, it just well, you should, you should, you, you should just stay live 24 hours on your phone. Well, it's a good point, because I went live yesterday, and then, like, I ended up going, we had a good discussion, and I didn't realise, it's only now I've noticed that you can now upload this to your IGTV. You couldn't do that, could you? A few you could you no. Know, the thing is, the thing is how I do it is before you could upload it to your IGTV, um, you could upload it to your live, right? And yes. that would stay there for twenty four hours. Yeah, but so I, I used to get my team to record that live. Yeah, what you could do is you you, you could just record the screen. Record the screen exactly. But um, that's a potch. But it's so easy now and there that you can actually just. Absolutely. But the only thing I don't like about uh, posting it directly on IGTV, and that is why I get my team to actually record it and come back to it. Because when you post it directly on IGTV, my head's like cut off from here and ah, your head's cut off uh, from here. And I don't like that. I, I want no. to see people. I want to show people because the first thing that they see on the profile is the image. Go ahead. And if the image is not right, no one's going to click on it. So if they can see me and who I'm interviewing clearly, yeah. it makes it more intriguing for them to click on that and listen to it. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's what people are. It's all about quick pace. I know it takes me like now when I finish this live with you, it's going to go on my IGTV because I can't put it live. And I hate that because I wanted to put it live on my live story rather than my IGTV. Ah, so I have to post it there and then my team's going to record it. And then they're going to remove that live and put the recorded one in there. Got you. Yeah. So it's like it's like increasing my work, but oh, well, what can you yeah, do? Yeah, 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 good. But yes, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be sending you a message because I really want to sell your painting. Cool, man. I know. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, I, um, so I might I might even I might even. And uh, to be honest, too, there's probably and funny enough, Barry Hearn and me and Eddie, we we had a little we had a photograph out there with a painter, and then, uh, Barry said to me, he said. You could you get a lot for that in London. Absolutely, hundred percent, hundred and I mean, a thousand percent. Yeah. So there's you know there's probably people around there that would be prepared to uh, to pay whatever. Make a good offer, you know. Make a good Absolutely, offer. absolutely. Um, and I'm going to start with that painting first, and I'm going to uh, if you can send me details of that or whatever, I'm going to uh, DM you my uh, email address. Cool. Um, and then we can take it from there. Good stuff. Hey. But uh, it's been an it's been an absolute pleasure having you and and seeing your various artworks. I mean, I'm sure that people will remember you long after you're gone as well. I hope that well, God yeah, gives you a long life and you paint many <laughs> more sports personalities and celebrities. Yes, I hope I, I'm going to be around about 105, I think, or maybe 110. Wow. Well. I wish I could predict my life, but I can't. <laughs> uh, but Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate it. And we'll speak soon. Take care. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, that was uh, Patrick Killian. I'm sure you can hear my kids at the back. Uh, it's Saturday weekend. Well, every day is a weekend out here, but it's good. Um, so that was all me talking about artwork with Patrick. And wow, some amazing, absolutely stunning pieces that uh, Patrick has, uh, you know, what should I call it? Drawn, designed, painted. It's like, I never knew that I would do these live sessions with people from different backgrounds it just gets better I, I i'm loving these live sessions i mean i was loving it before but now it's like wow it's going it's going crazy but thank you so much to all the viewers that tuned in it's been an absolute pleasure having you patrick thank you so much for sharing all the knowledge and the inspiration that you did um and do check out this live whenever you get the chance thank you so much for listening take care bye-bye